All right, so I'm out here today with my Caterpillar uh, 205 LC. Um, since I've owned the machine, I've had issues with the track tension on the right side track. It just really just doesn't hold the grease. Uh, it doesn't hold the tension. It's been that way since I bought it. And I finally decided, you know, I would look into it. So here's, here's the issue that I, I believe that I'm having. Uh, this guy here, that's a, that's called a button head grease fitting right there. And you would slip your coupler onto here to fill grease, but it's coming out. It's, it's all coming out the spout. So right there, that's, that's where the grease is coming out and it shouldn't, this should hold grease. Um, this part is stamped 94 the machine here. This is an this is a 1985 so Nine years after this machine was purchased This was uh, this was replaced this part from Caterpillar. I called my local dealer is a hundred dollars believe it or not um, For just this so what I'm gonna do is I I'm gonna try to fix it for less money and what what I going to try to do, I've never done it, is I'm going to drill that out, I'm going to tap it out, and I'm going to put in your standard Zerk, that's what it's called, it's a grease fitting, um, into this at a 45 degree, that's not a 90 degree, it's a 45, it'll make it nice and easy to get the grease gun on there, and then hopefully this will keep the grease from coming out. And that's like, I mean, you can pick, you can pick up a whole pack of these things for like four fifty, four dollars and fifty cents. You can buy a metric tap and die set, a really nice large metric tap and die set, for sixty five, seventy five dollars. So for eighty dollars, which is twenty dollars less than what this part would cost new, is going to be how uh, I go about fixing this. So it saves money and now I've got a nice top and die set. I've got spare Zerks. So if I ever need to replace a grease fitting again, um, I'll have the ability. So it's not really rocket science. Um, we're just going to, we're just going to take the drill and we're going to put the drill down in through here. Yes, metal shavings are going to get in there, but I left all the grease in there. So I'm hoping the grease will attract all the metal shavings. It'll stick to it and then I'll scrape it all out with a stick. And I guessed on the drill bit size, you know, I took my, took my tap. You know, that drill, I could probably go a little bigger than that drill bit. But start small, go big. going to happen to the innards of this because I can only imagine there's a spring in there and some other stuff. Um, let's see, it's you know, too thick here. It's stuck down now. You know, I'm guessing the spring that's in there is going to be way bigger than um, the hole that I want to drill. So I'm just going to go ahead and not worry about getting the internals out of here. I don't think that there's going to be any harm with the internals in there. I will pump a bunch of grease through it, a liberal amount, to help push any metal shavings out of there. I like to use a little bit of uh, lubrication 
on the tap, it helps the threads cut. It's gonna make a world of difference. You wanna check for 90 degree all the way around. Now some compressed air would be really nice right now, but I'm out in the woods. So unless I want to bring an air supply out here, whether it be gas powered or off a generator, I'm just going to do without it at the moment. I'm putting some lubricant down inside here. I want to loosen that grease up a bit. I want it, I want it to flow out of there nicely when I when I put some grease to it. So now I'm putting the Zerk, I'm installing the Zerk. I gotta grab a tool. It's a smooth bore pipe wrench right there. It's called a smooth bore pipe wrench because it's nice and flat and it's smooth. There's no teeth, it's not gonna mar anything. I like this tool a lot. I use it for hydraulic fittings, all sorts of stuff. It really comes in handy. So it's a go-to, it's always in my box. Now we don't want to go too tight to the point where we break these. This this needs to be snugged up here. And some of these some of these zerks, I mean these are cheap. I bought the whole set for four dollars, you know. They're not quality. So they're gonna break. I'm gonna, you know, if I overdo this, I'm gonna rip that thing right off of there. I know it. I've done it. I've been there. So the nice thing about that is the fact that I can let you guys know that you want to go easy on it. So, we're going to clip the grease gun to here. I'm going to put some grease through it. Just like that so now this takes grease I know that this this will take grease I pushed a bunch of it through so I hope I got all the metal shavings and uh, the last thing to do would be put it back on the machine fire it up get the track off the ground and we're gonna go to the location for the grease fitting it's really hard to see um, it's going in there.
Now, if I get lucky, that zerk will be pointing in the correct direction. If not, we will have to make an adjustment. You know, maybe I have another issue going on, but as far as, as far as I could tell for issues, um, you know, this was, this was the issue. This, we'll find out. Okay, so I think that worked pretty good. Uh, the only thing I did was uh, I originally put in a metric eight um, Zerk fitting and I upgraded it to a metric 10, which was the bigger size. I wanted to start out with the smaller size just to see how that would work. And if it would work, that would be fine. Um, you can always go bigger, you can't go smaller um, when you're drilling and tapping. Anyways, so it, it's holding, it's, there's a little bit of grease coming out. But it's coming out really slow, so I might have to revisit that, but I, I'm pleased, you know, for what it, what it saved me for money, um, very well worth it. So I'm gonna go through, do some other needed maintenance on the machine, and uh, call it a day.